Logic 10.5 is here. Oh wait, hang on. Let's roll that again. Logic 10.6 is here. Hey guys, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the new features in Logic 10.6. Now this isn't a major, major update like we got with 10.5 back in May, but there are some cool new features. Real quick, I wanna give a big thanks to MacProVideo.com for partnering with me on this Logic 10.6 update video. They have the largest collection of Logic Pro courses available on the internet, many of which I've personally taught and created myself. So go check out MacProVideo.com if you wanna learn more and dive deeper into everything that is Logic Pro. So there's two major updates in Logic 10.6. The first one, is that you can now use Logic Remote as a controller to control the step sequencer. And the second major update is that Logic now supports the entire Launchpad series from Novation as a control surface. So this is particularly helpful for controlling live loops. In addition, there are a bunch of under the hood changes, things like minor tweaks, and bug fixes, and I'll go over the more notable ones in this video. So let's get right into it. Let's check out the new Logic Pro 10.6. So first, let's check out the new features with the new version of Logic Remote. So with Logic 10.6 and the new version of Logic Remote, you can now control the step sequencer in Logic using Logic Remote on an iPad or an iPhone. So you can kind of use it as a wireless control surface. So in Logic, I've just got a blank software instrument pulled up here. I'm just gonna load up a drum kit. Then what I'll do is control click to create a new pattern region. And then you can see here, I've got my step sequencer. Next, I'll just open up Logic Remote. It's automatically connected to my MacBook. And right now we're just sort of seeing like a mixer view. What I'm gonna do is click here and I'm gonna go down to step sequencer and I can now program my beats in my step sequencer here rather than having to use my mouse on my computer. Now there's actually two play functions here. If you press play up here, this is gonna turn on the transport in logic. That's gonna play everything. If you just want to hear what's going on in the step sequencer, you can click play down here. Now right now I haven't entered in any notes yet. So let's do that. Let's create sort of a four on the floor pattern. Then you can just click here again to stop the pattern. Now, if I want to see other instruments in the step sequencer, I can just scroll down here. Let's add some hi-hats in here. Now you can enter these one at a time, just like so. But if you want to do like fast hats, you can just click and swipe across to enter them in sequentially or click and swipe across to delete them. So let's add in a bunch of these and I'll just take out some of them. Let's see what that sounds like. Now let's say that I want the pattern to be longer than 16 steps, or I want to you know, change the resolution of, of the sequence. It's as simple as clicking the I button down here. And here you can adjust the pattern length, the step rate, and some other parameters. So I'm gonna choose 32 steps. Let's double this. And what you'll see now is we only see 16 steps at a time, but if I click up here, I can go over to the second half. So let's say that I want to alter the beat a little bit on the second half, just like so, here we go. So here's the first half, the first 16 steps, and the second 16 steps. Now right now I'm just controlling the step on off, but if I wanna control other MIDI values like velocity, the gate, tide notes, octave, things like that, I can do that as well. So let's say I want to control the velocity instead. You just click here, select velocity value, and then just make sure this is highlighted down here. So now each of these steps, rather than just turning the note on or off, I can control the individual velocity of each note. So some of these quicker hits, maybe I want to pull down 
their velocities a bit just to kind of, uh, you know, pull down their dynamic a bit. So I'll do the same here. I'll do the same here. So that's just a quick flyover of the new step sequencer control in Logic Remote with Logic 10.6. This really makes beat building much quicker and more tactile than using your mouse. And I realize that not everyone has an iPad, but I know a lot of you have iPhones. So download Logic Remote and give it a shot on your iPhone first. Hell, you're carrying your own Logic control surface around in your pocket. All right, next up is the Novation Launchpad support. So now Logic 10.6 supports the Novation Launchpad series, the entire series as a control surface. So here I'm using the Launchpad Pro. I don't have a lot of time to go through everything, but I'll show you the basics. So this is particularly helpful for live loops. So I have a live loops uh, project pulled up here, and you can see that there's individual cell controls and also whole scene controls. So let me just uh, start off by playing scene two here. And you'll see that the whole row blinks when a scene is queued up. Now you can also control individual cells. So let's say I want to create a custom beat by mixing and mashing different cells. And then to stop playback in a cell, just press that cell again. Now you'll see here in my logic project that I have 10 scenes and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different rows of cells. If you need to switch between these, you can use your mouse or keyboard to move up and down and you'll see that the rows automatically change on the launch pad. But another way to do this is you can bank vertically here you can also bank horizontally here. There are other controls, like you can capture MIDI, you can record directly into a cell using uh, the, the launch pad, you can use its built-in sequencer, but really the session view here is going to be your main control for live loops. So you'll notice that if I start off an entire scene, I can actually play other cells and queue up those other cells so I can bring other cells into the scene that I currently have queued. Now, admittedly, I'm not the most well-versed with Launchpad yet. I just bought the Launchpad the other day, but I'll make sure to learn everything I can about it and do some new videos covering music creation and live performance using both Logic Remote and Launchpad Pro. They're incredibly powerful tools for on-the-fly music production. And remember, this update supports all devices in the Launchpad series. Okay, so that covers the two major updates with Logic 10.6, but let's dive into some of the minor updates. Like I said before, there are literally hundreds of tweaks and bug fixes, all under the hood stuff just to make Logic run better. But I wanna point out a few of these that stood out to me. First, there's a brand new Logic icon that's more in line with the look of the new Big Sur application icons. And as you might have seen earlier this week, Apple unveiled three new Macs with Apple Silicon in them, starting a move away from Intel processors. Logic Pro is a universal app, so it'll work with both Intel and Apple Silicon, but it will have improved performance and efficiency on computers with Apple Silicon. In Logic 10.5, they added some additional sample instrument building shortcuts built into the track headers. Now, you can also drag and drop a sample and map to the sampler instrument with the zone per note method. So this will be particularly helpful for quickly building multi-sample sampler instruments. They fixed a bug where if you paste a marquee selection into a cell, it now leaves a blank space before and after the region if the selection is larger than the region. 
There's now an available key command to open the step sequencer in a floating window, but you have to assign it. So I'll assign this to shift command nine. So now shift command nine opens up the step sequencer and command W closes it. There are also several new keyboard, mallet, and processed piano patches. You can see here that I've still yet to download these, but there's quite a few new patches. Now there are many, many other changes and tweaks that I haven't mentioned, but these are just the main ones that stood out to me. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. So while I was editing this video, I got the master list of all of the tweaks and changes for Logic 10.6, and I literally sat and counted every single one. There are over 300 tweaks and changes and improvements and bug fixes in this version of Logic. And um, just from my first impressions, I think this is one of the most stable versions of Logic I've used in a long time. So that's what's new in Logic Pro 10.6. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you for the support and thanks for watching.